and I think that goes back to this whole thing that that you know I I personally I mean we're what I think this is week twelve of this and and we probably spent seventy percent of our talking seventy percent of our time talking about generative AI and AI in general and and I think it it's I don't want to say it's a disservice I mean look we're following the news we're talking about what people are mm-hmm. talking about but I think we can't ignore the fact that the bread and butter as we just talked about is is really the stuff that consumes most of the day to day life and what's interesting is you and I were both at events last week that were really focused. I mean, there were obviously, I, I, you know, I presume on your side and on my side as well, there's lots of AI, but the mm-hmm. core was bread and butter. So maybe we should talk a little bit about the more the more practical parts of it that are still happening. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we were both out last week. Uh, I was at Tableau Conference, uh, obviously an analytics company, analytics market leader that uh, wanted to talk about AI, AI uh, all the time uh, as part of their new capabilities and their bread and butter and their platform. But what I actually found interesting is that um, obviously you can't get out of, away from Tableau in your data environment. Every, every large enterprise has at least one Tableau C. Uh, and it is a favorite of, for data analysts around the world. Uh, they have a great community. Their technical keynotes are much like Apple keynotes where the fanboys and fangirls will cheer over every single uh, feature that comes out. Uh, and, and it's fantastic. Uh, you know, they, they love the product, obviously. But Tableau also realizes that they need to expand beyond the data analyst, that there's this 70, 75% of the employee base that honestly doesn't want to be data analysts and doesn't have time to be data analysts and doesn't have time to capture these thousand SaaS apps that are all around the company and to standardize that data schema so that they can do analytics intelligently. You know, all of that is stuff that executives don't have time to do. Uh, line, Line of business workers don't have time to do. Uh, operational workers just don't have time to do. So uh, Tableau is working on their story on how to uh, focus on the rest of those people. Yes, with generative AI, but in a way that is actually conceptually and contextually uh, relevant to those workers. So Tableau has that end user story that they're working on, as well as a partnership story that is now really uh, centered on Databricks and Microsoft. Uh, it used to be that Tableau focused a lot more on focus on working with uh, more focused data players, such as Altrix or Informatica, uh, important players in the software space, but very much focused on data management and data integration. And now they are actually looking at the big, massive data clouds and hyperscalers. And, and uh, of course, they have their Amazon and Google announcements as well, but not quite as much as I would have expected, considering that Amazon CEO was formerly Tableau CEO. You would have thought there'd be a little bit of a closer uh, partnership there, but um, it hasn't quite uh, worked out yet. But even so, um, it, it was interesting to see that uh, Tableau is working on uh, a more holistic vision of how to work with data rather than simply empowering the data analysts and impressing people with their support of Google fonts or you know now having read in 13 different uh, uh, versions or whatever it, uh, excites data analysts and data report writers. <laughs> well, uh, so uh, a couple of questions. For, I mean, one is I think that this is, you know, we talked a couple of weeks ago about Zendesk and their application of AI in a more pragmatic way. I think this the the news at a tableau is very similar to this, right? This is less the big, you know, big exciting approaches to AI and much more pragmatic uses. The things that I think ultimately are going to be where, you know, as we go through the the famous hype cycle that we're going to see more, right? It's it's not as flashy, it's not as sexy, but it's more important. It's more usable mm-hmm. from a day-to-day basis. And so I think that's that's positive. What I'm curious from your perspective before we move on from this topic is you know the Salesforce acquisition was was a while back, and it's normally about the time where we start seeing things either really click or really start falling apart. I mean, what's mm-hmm. you, what's your read if you're a Tableau customer? Um, is this working out in your mind, or are there warning signs? It's interesting in that uh, so the acquisition was about five years ago, but uh, since then it's been a little bit rocky from an operational perspective. Um, Partially because obviously COVID, 
So a, a year after the acquisition, they had COVID happen. And then um, since then, they've seen most of their founding executives leave. Not all of them, but many of them. So they've had to replace their CEO a couple of times. They've had to replace their chief product officer, uh, Francois Agenstadt, who was a superstar in that organization, uh, recently left uh, about a year ago. Uh, he's been replaced by a guy named uh, Southern Jones, who uh, ha also has a very strong analytics background. Um, so they had to fill in these gaps. And I feel like although they supported the data analyst community, they did it in a way that was kind of status quo without a real vision of saying, here's what we are going to do next uh, in, from a strategic perspective. And it's taken them basically the past five years to figure out how to get to a point where they have a vision that is anything more than simply improving the data analyst experience, which is honestly not that different from what every other business intelligence and analytics player out there claims to do. So it, it's been a, a challenging uh, road for them, but I think that there's a renewed focus on the Tableau platform that is shown throughout the past year now that their executive team has had uh, across the board a year to settle in to their roles and they've started to actually figure out what they need to do to grow the product because Tableau actually as a business has been pretty successful. It's been growing 20% a year. So they know how to sell the product over at Salesforce. Um, they're comfortable with supporting the product. Uh, they know how to not mess it up. They, but now they have to figure out how to actually make it significantly better uh, just because that's where we all are in tech, either improve or die.